This is the, um, the sort of thing I'm trying to uh, show you how to do. Um, this page here, it's um, the first page of one of my sketchbooks and uh, it was quite fun to to make and uh, you can see it looks like there are some water droplets on a, on a strange background. The background is uh, produced by the use of salt. Now everybody knows how to use salt. You just sprinkle it on your wet paper, on your wet uh, colour on the paper. But is that all? Is that all you have to know? Well, in this video, in this tutorial, I'm going to tell you something more about salt. Um, and perhaps you will learn something. So, let's continue. The background is made with two colours. Um, ultramarine blue and uh, viridien, this um, emerald green colour. Uh, so it's it's important that you know which colours you want to use. Use the colours you like. Um, use the colours by mixing them and um, see what comes out of this. The colour has to be painted onto, onto wetted papers, but before I wet the paper I want to have my my colours ready because it's uh, it's it's no good me wetting the paper first and then dissolving the colours here because when I've if it's taking me too long time to dissolve the colours and when I get back to the paper then it's dry. So it's a good idea. Well it's not just a good idea, it's it's uh, <laughs> it's it's the only thing to do is to dissolve your colours before you start wetting the paper. And this is my ultramarine blue colour. I don't know how much I'm going to use, but okay, the, the, the other thing we've got to remember is this, this here, the colour which I've dissolved here is quite weak, but if I want some strong colour then I can uh, go direct to this pen here and um, fill my brush with some very strong colour and go, go direct to the paper. Strong colour. I wash the brush out and then I go to the other colour that I'm going to be using it's the emerald green colour here. It's a it's a colour that ev almost everybody has in their um, paint box, but not very many people know how to use it, um, including me. <laughs> I use it for such things as this and for when I paint the sea, but other than that, I haven't learned to use it yet. <laughs> okay, wash the colour out of my brush. The, the water, as you can see, is a little bit murky, it's a little bit dirty, but uh, that doesn't really matter. Then I start putting it on. Remember that if you paint the water on, if you wet the paper evenly, then the colour will spread evenly. It's not quite, um, in this case here, perhaps it's not necessary for the colour to spread evenly. Um, so there will be some areas it's probably impossible to see from the angle that the camera is in, but there are some areas which have got quite a lot of water and other areas which are almost dry. Then I start with the with the colour. See, I, I go direct into the this thing because I really want some some very dark or strong colours on my paper here. Then, <clears throat> before I've finished with the blue, I'm sort of get back to the blue again. I start putting the the green on. And I start mixing the two colours on the paper. Now I can see the green is taking over here, so now I go back to the go back to the blue and get some more blue here. All the time I wash my brush out and uh, and go back to the paint and the paper. Here I want to have some very weak effects. So the, 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 the paint has got to be quite weak here. Yeah. Other places, like here and here, I want to have a very strong effect. So I put that on. Now this thing hasn't, this, this, this colour on the paper has not got to dry because now I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm going to throw some salt onto it. And um, I got the salt in this thing here. Fine salt, fine table salt. And... What I do now, I just take some salt and I throw it on. 
what happens is that when salt falls onto wet paper, it absorbs the water. And if there is pigment in that water, then it will absorb the pigment, leaving behind a clear area. You will see that the salt is going to be absorbing the color and leaving behind a, a clear area around the salt. You can see it happening already here. Okay, so here you can see that there are some white spots appearing. But um, the only thing to do now is to wait and see what happens. I'll tell you something. I'll tell you what. I think I'm going to try and get some more water. This thing, this area here seems to be a little bit weak. I, I, I'm not going to add more water. I'm just going to add more paint and see what happens. No, I've, I've got the salt on the on the paper and um, uh, I don't think it'll ruin my brush. I'm going to wash it out very quickly in a minute. I'm going to put some, oops, I almost went into my salt. That wouldn't have been much good. Um, where else can I put? I want to put more of this. Again, I've now got salt on the paper. It's getting onto my brush. Um, what happens if the salt gets onto my paints in my paint box? Um, I'm not too sure. <laughs> I'm going to... S <laughs> so, better be careful there. <laughs> More salt onto the... Thing. And just let it dry now and see what happens. Um, you can't do much more. And uh, we'll see. It's this is just like watching paint dry, isn't it? I mean, it takes ages. You can uh, use all sorts of salt for this. Um, here I've used fine uh, table salt, but uh, you can use cooking salt. You can use uh, all those different salts you can buy. Um, with great big salt grains, you can buy them with salt flakes, and you can buy all sorts of salt. Um, I use uh, fine table salt because it's easiest for me to control. Um, as we've seen, when salt falls on, uh, on 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 wet paper and there's paint on it, then it absorbs the pigment and leaves behind a, a light area around the um, around the salt uh, grain. Um, and the longer it's, it, it, the salt lies on the paper, the, the, the larger will these areas become, it eventually running together and giving a, a nice pattern. Um, if you use large uh, grained salt, then it takes a long time for these grains to absorb the water and the pigments. And uh, uh, the other thing is that if you use salt with large grains, don't use quite so much. So there's more space between the salt grains and they don't sort of run together in the same way. Um, they, they, <laughs> you can almost use large grain salt to paint flowers. I mean, if you drop one large salt grain onto a color, then it will absorb um, the pigment around. And, it, it, and when you remove the salt, <laughs> have a flower left. <laughs> I mean, people use, use salt to, to, to give the effect of flowers. They use effects to give... Um, flakes of, of, of snow they they uh, yeah I mean you can find out by by playing about with salt what you can use it for but I use fine table salt because I know how to control that and to stop the process I usually use a hairdryer now you can see the salt is still wet here so um, it's gone about 15-20 minutes and it's still not dry <laughs> Well, I'll just have to wait. I think I'm going to give it a blast with my hairdryer here and see what happens. I don't think um, I'm going to get very much more effect uh, by letting it dry naturally, so I'm going to see what happens when I give it a go with this here hairdryer. If you like the way that I teach and believe that you can get benefit from my lessons, then I suggest that you have a look at my ebook. The book is called Watercolor, a book of watercolor techniques, 
and is available on my website. The ebook contains 23 chapters and is written with people starting in watercolour in mind. There are sections on painting theory, tips and tricks, and step-by-step -step painting instructions. The book is now improved with extra illustrations and video clips. The ebook costs 15 US dollars and one pays by PayPal. I send you the book by email after I have confirmation of the payment. So go to my ebook webpage and see the contents of the of the chapters. And um, if you decide to buy it, then you can see how to order it on the same page. Something that um, that can happen when you're using a hairdryer on on salt and paper and things like that is that when you dried it, then you'll find that the salt has really well, it hasn't burnt into the paper, but it's really, um, it, 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 it becomes very difficult to remove. You have to almost scrape it off with your fingernail or something like that. But uh, um, the idea is, of course, to remove all the salt um, because we're going to paint something else onto this. If the, if the salt is remaining on it, then it'll, it'll, it'll start um, dissolving again and, and uh, ruin what's going to come on afterwards. So um, I'm going to make sure that I've dried this with the hairdryer completely. Now here I've um, really made an effort to try and get quite a lot of structure into this um, salt area because it looks more interesting and uh, I'm hoping that it will uh, look even better when the water droplets come onto this. But it's not always that you want to have so much texture and structure in your background with salt. Um, I've got another picture here. So here, last year I was in um, the Balkans um, at a place called Budva in Montenegro. And um, there is a, a statue by the sea of a, of a girl, a dancer, a ballet dancer, or perhaps a gymnast. Um, stories vary. Uh, and, um, and I did a drawing of this sculpture in my sketchbook. Then when I came home, I thought, well, that's not much, one drawing of a girl. So I added more drawings of the same figure in different sizes and different, from different angles just to make the page a little bit more interesting. Then I wetted it, painted it, and threw salt on it. But you can see here, the effect of the salt is not quite as, as great as in the other picture, which I'm doing now. I wanted to use it as a background on which to write the story of the statue. I used acrylic pen with white paint to write this story onto this darker background. Now the whole idea is that the salt has to be removed and um, as I said before when you use a hairdryer sometimes the salt gets almost burnt into the paper so um, now I'm going to see how I can remove the salt. Yes I know it sounds just like sandpaper it is <laughs> almost salt paper. Um, you can see what's happening to my hand. It's, I'm getting all the colours on there. Uh, if I don't want to get the colours onto my hand, then I can use a piece of paper. I don't think it's ruining the surface of the watercolour paper. I suppose you can ask um, why remove the salt. It's uh, it might look quite good on the on the paper, but the thing is that if you don't remove it, then it will affect the uh, the next layer of, of of paint that you paint onto this. Um, and if you don't remove it, then and hang the picture up in in some some room or something where um, it gets a little bit uh, damp then the salt starts working again and starts uh, <laughs> keeps on <laughs> affecting your, your picture without your control. 
So the best thing to do is to remove it. Well, now I'm going to remove the tape from around the uh, picture and see how it looks with a clean edge. And here you can see how important it is to paint completely up to the edges of the tape because it will give you a nice clean edge to the picture. So what I'm going to do now is to wash out an oval area um, out of this um, this background here. Okay, so I, I wash my brush out here and then I dry it a little bit on my my paper here. Then I go here and I wash out an oval Okay, then I take it up with, I take the, the paint up with the tissue here. That could be one oval there, which will give me a water droplet. I, I find another area which is quite dark. This, I think here, this, this will be quite nice. Now the whole thing is, you shouldn't wash out all the colour from this area here. The um, the water drops uh, <laughs> the water droplets still contain a little bit of colour, um, even though the colour is much lighter than the background. So you're not supposed to take all the colour out. Perhaps another one here is somewhere. The funny thing is now I'm. Uh, making some water droplets which are oval. Um, some time ago I had a class where we were painting water droplets and it was raining. Perfect to see how water droplets look. We looked at the window pane, there were water droplets running down the window pane. There wasn't a single water droplet that was oval. They were all <laughs> square and triangular and, and and different versions of those two forms but there was nothing that was that was completely oval as the ones I'm doing now and of course now I'm making them all the same size because um, yeah I don't know why perhaps I ought to make a smaller one as well I'll make a smaller one here. So now I have five water droplets here and they have to be completely dry before I can paint them. So I'm just going to give it a little blast with my hair dryer. So now I'm going to go over to my other brush that I've got. I've got a, a brush in, in England, it's called a rigger brush. In, um, I think in, in America it's called a liner. It's a, it's a brush with very few long hairs and it is just perfect for small details and, and lines. Um, so this is what I'm going to use. I've got my two colours here. Now the colour I'm going to paint on now has to be a little bit darker than the colours I've got here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a little bit of Payne's Grey. Payne's Grey, it's, it's a very dark... I've got the bluish Payne's Grey. Um, watch out with Payne's Grey, you, you can get one which looks almost black and the other one which is quite a bluish one. I like the bluish one. That's the one I've got here. So now I go back to my, one of my water droplets and I paint about a third of the way down on dry paper, but then I wash I wash the colour out of my rigger brush and I dry it a little bit here. Then I go back to my water droplet and I try and tone this colour out. Again, every time I 
try to tone anything out. I have to go back to the water and wash the colour out. Otherwise, I'm just moving the colour uh, down down the water droplet. When I've done that, I paint a a shadow underneath the water droplet. The shadow can be quite deep. It's got almost the same profile as the bottom of the water droplet. Now I've got this shadow underneath the water droplet here. I can see this this colour here is 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 getting a bit lighter. It's a great advantage to have this colour to be to be very dark because in the end I'm going to have a little point of light on it and if this colour isn't dark enough then the point of light will not show too well. Anyway, I think that one's okay. Then I'll go up to this one and do the same here. I'll do four of these things so you can see. If you miss the first one then you'll see the other one, the number two. If you miss that one then you'll see number three and number four in the end. Okay, so, and I increase the the strength of this colour here. Wash the colour out of my brush, dry it a little bit here, and then with a damp brush I pull the colour down over the... It's quite important there's quite a lot of white, uh, light area in the middle of the of the water droplet. Water droplet. Again, a very dark colour at the bottom. And I pull this colour up the side of the water droplet on both sides here. You see how easy it is to make very fine thin lines with this rigger brush. Number two, and I'll do it again. The thing is that <coughs> because um, these water droplets are transparent, then these shadows, the ones at the top and the ones underneath, have to have about the same colour as the background. So if you have a green background, so the shadows have to be greenish. If you have a red background, they have to be reddish. If you have a blue background, they have to be bluish. You can't have a something on a green background and have a red shadow. I mean, that just wouldn't happen in nature and won't happen in a painting. Just paint the top of this about a third of the way down, perhaps a quarter of the way down, wash the colour out of the brush, dry it a little bit on here and pull this. Then the shadow underneath. It's difficult from the different angles here. One there, I think I'll give it a little bit more on top. You'll see why in a minute when I paint the white. And I can also, now this one also has lightened itself a little bit. I'll just give it a little bit more. So I've got this one here. At the bottom, more paints grey to this thing here. When you have such a small one as here, sometimes it can give a little bit of trouble um, getting the, the 
the shadow on top because the things are too small now. But um, I shall try and it gets some some color on here. And a little bit of shadow underneath. So the first spot, it's um, washed out with a damp brush and uh, just uh, pick up the uh, the dissolved paint up in a in a tissue. The other one, the next one, I'm going to use a scalpel, a knife, and with that knife, I shall scratch the light. into the top of the water droplet. Now the third and the third one, I'm going to use um, this stuff called gouache. It's designer's gouache. It's a very, very yeah, <laughs> strong watercolor. Um, it's, it's, it's water-based color, it's white. And uh, the idea is to take it on your brush and you paint it Oops, on there, that was perhaps a little bit too violent, a little bit too much. Just take a little bit of it out and just make a, like that. And I've got a couple left. I think I shall uh, show, you, you can see if you look at the three uh, light points of light here, uh, the weakest one is the one where you try to wash out with water. The one where you scratch is much better, and the one where you put the uh, uh, the the gouache on is also much better. Um, sometimes you also see the um, the light, apart from it being just on the top. You also see it down the side of the of the water droplet. Would you see it on both sides? You see now this is very light here, so it's, it's very difficult to see. But um, this one is a little bit, a little bit darker, perhaps. See how that looks. And on this one, oh, I've used gouache on this, I think I shall. I think on this one I shall scratch it out again just to see how. So there are different ways of getting this point of light on. I will say that the weakest one is the one where you wash out the uh, the paint from the top, uh, from from the dark shadow at the top. Um, gouache and uh, the knife seem to work the best. Well that was the lesson for today. Now I suggest that you uh, try something like this at home and see how it goes. Enjoy painting.